Hey, what's up guys? Colin Coates here from Built to Wander. You may be aware of us from some of our previous builds, YetiCon, 50 Shades JK, and our recent build for the 2019 SEMA show, the Triton JL. Today, the Stoke is at an all-time high as we've recently partnered with Driving Line to bring you guys a brand new vlog series. Welcome to episode one. We just pulled up to Ram Off-Road Park in Colorado Springs, and we're gonna do a little comparison between a nearly stock JL Unlimited Rubicon and one that's fully built, or in this case, the Triton JL. just pulled up to Ram Off-Road Park. So we're gonna go ahead and open up the gate and start playing around on some, uh, some different trails and some different obstacles. Should be a fun day. All right, let's do this. got Kevin Posner here from Denver who came down with his Wrangler Unlimited Rubicon to help us out for the day. Wanted to introduce you to Kevin. You ready to have some fun today? Yeah, let's do it. So I have to say, Jeep does an amazing job with these Wranglers from the factory. The Rubicon is obviously one of the most capable off-road vehicles on the market. And this Wrangler JL Unlimited is no exception. We're always impressed with uh, what we're able to do with these things off-road before any modifications are made. We always take every single build of ours off-road. We, we get to know it a little bit in its stock form before we start to modify it, just because it gives us that extra appreciation for when we do start to make modifications. And it allows us to kind of see those benefits and added capabilities unfold and really understand them and appreciate them more. One of the cool things about the new Wrangler is the spec plate on the tailgate. So uh, what that talks about is water fording height, which has to do with your ground clearance. And it also talks about the overall width of the Jeep as well as the wheelbase. Now on the Triton JL, the wheelbase is, is relatively the same as a stock Rubicon. What we did was we used some adjustable control arms from Rock Jock to really allow us to put those wheels back into the center of the wheel wells once the vehicle was lifted. It calls out about 30 inches of water fording um, which is the line just where that tailgate, bottom of the tailgate is sealing with the cargo area. It also says that the overall width of the vehicle from outside edge of each tire is 73.9 inches. And it's telling us that the track width is 64.4 inches, which is the center line of the passenger tire to the center line of the driver tire. So we're gonna go ahead and show you the track width, the overall width, and also that water fording uh, height on the Triton JL. So I got, uh, I got Matt Thompson here from 3D Off-Road. He's helping me out this morning. He's gonna go ahead and take some measurements for us and show us what the differences are on the Triton JL in terms of track width, overall width, and that water fording height. So Matt, if you could just show us what that uh, track width is. And track just... width is center tire to center of tire. at 76 inches. 76 inches, and what's our overall width? overall width is outside of tire to outside of tire at 89 inches 89 inches and are you measuring to the edge of the tread or to the outside edge of the sidewall outside edge of the sidewall okay awesome so quite a bit wider than factory um, and the reason we went wider is that we've got custom width curry enterprises extreme 60 axles and and it gives us a little bit more stability to make up for the lift height so what about water fording height Water fording high, we are at 37 inches. 37 inches. So that tells us that we're about seven inches taller, at least at the edge of that rear tailgate on the Triton JL, than we are on a factory JL. When we began planning the Triton JL build, we kind of had to determine what direction we were going to go. And really, we based it off the tire size. We wanted to run a 40 inch tire. 
is a 40 inch tire the best size tire to run? No, not necessarily. It really all depends on what you want to do with the vehicle um, and what your preference is. I've built a couple Jeeps uh, in the past. The Yeti Con was initially built on a set of 35 inch trail grapplers, then we went to 37s. 50 Shades started out on a set of 37s, and then we went to a 40 inch trail grappler. And when we went to that 40, we were able to do so much more on the trail. We were able to pick harder lines and just have a little bit more fun for our kind of wheeling style, which for me, I like more of the rock crawling, the slow and steady stuff. Um, it's fun to open it up every once in a while, but really this build was de developed to kind of go out to places like Moab, Utah, or maybe the Rubicon Trail and pick some of those harder lines, you know, get a little flexed out. Um, and just kind of you know do the rock crawling thing so that's why we went for a 40 but for us it felt like the right choice and the best choice based on our wheeling style and our previous experience so you know starting with a 40 inch tire there's this thing that I believe in called the waterfall effect or a snowball effect and it's really what do you need to effectively run a 40 inch tire that's where things start to snowball to support a 40 inch tire, I think it's wise to have a set of heavy duty axles. Um, so we went with Curry Enterprise uh, Extreme 60 front and rear axles with ARB air lockers, 538 motive gears, big brakes, and they come with an eight lug pattern. So we had to get different wheels. We picked a set of KMC Robbie Gordon beadlock wheels in an eight lug configuration. You can also get these axles in a six lug configuration, but the eight lug comes with a bigger set of brakes. So for us, you know, having a heavier tire, having a heavier wheel, we felt having that extra braking power would be beneficial. Uh, but not only do you need a heavier duty axle, now you need a heavier duty drive shaft. So we've got 1350 series Adams drive shafts in the front and rear. Um, okay, so now you've got your drivetrain under control. How are you gonna fit that tire underneath the Jeep? Well, you need to have some different suspension. So we went with uh, a custom setup from Rebel Off-Road, recon dual suspension setup in the front, and their standard recon coil over in the rear, which gives us about four and a half, five inches of lift, plenty of room to stuff those 40 inch tires and cycle the suspension correctly. And we paired it with a set of rock jock long arms. As the vehicle lifts up, the wheels will start to get sucked under the Jeep if you don't put in a, a set of adjustable control arms. So having that long arm helped us return the control arms back to kind of a factory-like angle and also push those wheels back into the center of the wheel well um, to kind of elevate its performance both on-road and off-road. Once you've got you know, your wheels and tires in place, you've got the drivetrain set up and even suspension, now you want to start talking about protecting the vehicle. So we're talking body armor, front and rear bumpers, rock rails, skid plates. So, uh, you know, in order to fit that 40 inch tire up front, we had to go with a stubby front bumper, which came from Rebel Off-Road. We put the Summit Series front and rear bumpers on, and we also added a set of rock sliders from Casey Curry Motorsports. So that protects the uh, rocker panel on the vehicle. That way, you know, when we're rock crawling and we're sliding on and off rocks, we're not damaging the rocker panel or even the doors for that matter. So the front and rear bumpers and the rock rails all add a little bit of protection to the Jeep. Um, you know, these new Wranglers are quite the investment and it's important to protect that investment. One additional area worth mentioning is accessorizing. There's a million different ways to accessorize these Jeeps. Uh, everybody has their own taste or style. Um, we tried to keep it pretty simple. We added a worn winch up front with some Factor 55 recovery gear, as well as some Baja Designs lighting that we integrated throughout the whole build. So we went with a set of squadrons, up on the a pillar and the squadron sports in the bumper as fogs we've got some lp6s on the bumper we integrated uh, rock lights on all four corners and we also did a set of squadron sports in the rear so that when we're camping or getting into the tailgate we can kind of illuminate our campsite or or you know be able to see what we're doing at night so we're going to go ahead and show each jeep going up a series up and down a series of obstacles maybe doing a little bit of rock crawling to really show you the difference in capability of each vehicle and why uh, you know some of those modifications can make quite a bit of difference on the trail
with 33 inch tires, front and rear lockers, and an electronic sway bar disconnect, the JL Wrangler Unlimited Rubicon is by far one of the most capable vehicles you can buy from the factory. Um, as we've shown today, uh, it is quite capable and, and with a couple modifications, um, in this case a couple major ones, um, it's amazing what you can get these vehicles to do. Thanks for checking out today's video guys. If you have any questions or comments, drop us a note below. Hit the like button if you did and subscribe if you haven't. Wander on.